Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you about input effects in Reaper. Now, input effects work very similar to track effects, which are on the track, or item effects, which are put on items. But the difference is, we're going to actually print or record the effects while we're recording our part. So, actually committing to those effects. Let me give an example. I have a guitar part that I'm ready to record. And it sounds like this. Now let's say I want to put a flanger on that guitar. Normally, we put it on right here, on the track effects. Let's put it there for now. I'll go down and find a flanger right here. And let's find a preset. That sounds pretty good. Now, if we record a guitar to this track, let's see what happens. We didn't actually record the effect along with the guitar. We just recorded the guitar. So at any time, we could turn it off right here. And the flange is gone. But we could turn it back on to get back that flange. But if you notice, it sounds a bit different. That's because with effects like flange or phase, they could be a bit random, as their highs and lows can happen in different places. So if we print that effect as we're playing the guitar, it's gonna play back exactly as it was recorded. So if the guitar plays playing into the effect or playing off of it, we're gonna capture that exact performance. So now let's move this track effects to the input effects. And we could do that by going right here to the effect button, hold on Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac and just drag it over to here. And that moves it from here, the track effects, to over here, the input effects. So let's record it again with the effect on the input. And now if we play it back, the flange is actually recorded. So if we delete it over here, the effect is already committed in this piece of audio. So it plays back exactly as it was performed. So this makes sense for things like flange or phase. Let's check out phase. Let's go right to the input effects this time. Let's go down here to a phaser. And let's tweak this preset. And once again, because we put the effect on the input effects right here, we're going to print the effect as we record the guitar. So even if we delete the effect over here, it's still printed to the audio file. Just like it was performed when the guitar player played it. Now this also makes sense if you want to control parameters in real time using MIDI control. Let me give you an example. Let's put a filter on this track, on the input effects. Let's use the Reaper EQ right here. And we'll add a low pass filter to bring up the bandwidth. Now we can adjust this during the performance. Now I set this up with an expression pedal, but this will work with any MIDI input to have it control this while the guitar player is playing. And because we put it on the input effects, we could print this while he's playing his part. And the guitar player could control it with their MIDI expression pedal. So let's go into record and record that part. 
And again, our effect is now printed with the audio. So you want to keep that in mind as you can't undo the effect, but it's great when you want to commit to that effect. For example, let's say you're using a guitar amp plugin on many different tracks, and you don't want to waste the CPU processing. So you want to print the effect as you're recording. So you could do that as well. Let's delete this. Let's add another effect to the input effects. This time we'll use a guitar amp plugin, like this one right here, Vintage Amp Room by Softube. Let's choose a preset. And again, if we like that preset, when we put it on the input effects, instead of the track effects, it's going to print with that plugin during the recording. And it's right here, printed with the audio, as this plugin is no longer being used. So we can delete it from here. As we printed the effect during the recording pass. This is also going to work with MIDI. So let's change our input to be a keyboard. And let's put a piano plugin on the track effects. Let's use piano one. And let's say I wanted to record a part, but I wanted to transpose the part. Because I'm not a great piano player, and I want to play this part in a different key. That's in C, but I want to play it in D, and because I'm not a good piano player, I need to transpose it so I can play it in C. Now, if I put that plugin on the track effects, the notes that'll be recorded will be the wrong notes, and the plugin will fix them afterwards. But if we put that effect over here instead on the input effects, let's do that. Let's type in MIDI. And let's go down here to transpose notes. And let's switch this to be a whole step higher. So I'll type in two or two half steps. Now, if I play that part, Now it's in D, but I'm actually playing in C. As you can see by the keyboard down here. But because it's on the input effects, the notes are going to be recorded correctly. Check it out. So if I double click this and look at the notes down here, this note's a D. So what's actually being recorded are the correct notes. As I played it in C, but it's recording it in D. That's because we printed it with this plugin right here, the transpose notes going on the input effects. So it's making that translation or that transposing in real time on the way in. So that's pretty much it. That's the input effects in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.